You invite joy into your life when you invite Jesus to dwell in your heart. Yes. There is no other way that you can get joy. <laughs> because joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. It is God's Spirit that gives you this joy. And if joy is missing from your life, the question you must ask is, do I have the Spirit of God inside of me? Because once you have the Spirit of God in your life, then joy is in your life. There is no such thing as a grumpy, miserable Christian. It is an oxymoron. The two don't mix at all. Because God is not a grumpy, miserable old man with a long beard looking down from heaven. God is a God of peace and, and joy and God is a loving, caring God. If you are a grumpy person, the question must be asked, do you have joy? And if you don't have joy, the question is, do you have the spirit of a living God? Amen. Amen. Because Amen. joy comes from the spirit of God. All right. It's not standing on emotions. It stands on the strength of your relationship with God. <laughs> joy does not stand on your emotions. Today I'm not feeling good. Today I'm, the, I'm so miserable. Today I'm not happy. And today I'm frustrated. And, to, and I'm not saying those things can happen to you when you, have, uh, when you have joy. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when we're talking about joy, we're not talking about your emotions as they move as the roller coaster. You know, some people emotions are like a roller coaster. It just keeps going up and sometimes it drops and sometimes it, you know, that's, I used to work in a theme park. I love theme parks. All my undergrad, I work in theme parks. And so I would ride the rides and I know how the rides would go. Sometimes I know what to expect and I'm just waiting for it to drop and I'm listening for the, the people above me and the people below me to start screaming. Because I just, I, and some people, their emotions are, their emotions are like that. It's like a roller coaster ride. Oh my goodness, sometimes you're having good times this minute, and the next minute it is just like hell. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> but joy does not stand on our, our emotion. That's not joy. That's happiness. Joy stands on the strength of our relationship with God. The relationship with God determines how much joy shines through you. Your relationship with God is what determines what, how much joy is shining through you as a Christian. We reflect God. We are like the moon reflecting the sun. We reflect God. And all that happens when I look at you or you look at me and you see that my joy is at the minimum, it tells you how deep or how strong my relationship is with God. Because if my relationship is strong with God, then the joy that is deep down inside of me because God himself is deep down inside of me you will see the joy of heaven coming out in my life because my relationship with God is strong alright you may not always feel happy but you can still have joy in your heart because Jesus dwells within you. And we have two options this morning. You can decide to receive this joy and keep it or receive it and allow something or someone to steal your joy. There are two options this morning. You can decide to receive this joy from God or you can decide to receive it and allow something or somebody to steal your joy. You have that choice this morning. You know what the Chief Justice, um, Chief Justice Oliver Holmes said? 
he said, I might have entered the ministry if certain clergymen I knew had not looked and acted so much like undertakers. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I would have entered the ministry. This is, this is a chief justice man. He said, I would have entered the ministry if clergymen I knew did not look or acted so much like they were undertakers. When we, when we, when, I don't know about you, man. I, 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 I'm wondering what you're going to do when you go to heaven. I know what I'm going to do if I get to heaven. I'm going to be jumping. I'm going to be shouting. I'm going to be having a grand time just to know that I make it into the kingdom of God. I'm not going to be inside reaching it. I'm going to be so, I'm going to be noisy. People, you, you, if you have a problem with noise and you get to heaven and I'm in heaven, just stay far from me because I'm going to be jumping and shouting and clapping and I'm going to be having a good time because I know myself. I know I should not be in heaven. <laughs>
Sometimes the devil steals our joy by giving us unsatisfied expectations. And most people can never be contented with where the Lord has us at the moment. There are people who are never, ever, ever contented with where they're at in life. It's almost as if they want more. And if you're at that place, man, that's a joy stealer. When you can't be contented with where you are in life, am I saying that you should just fold your hands where you are in life and not try to progress? I'm not saying that. But when God moves you and moves you around and puts you at a certain place in life, you still want more? God, God is always working on our behalf. Most people can never be contented with where the Lord has them. They just can't be contented at all. What Paul says in first in Philippians 4, 12 is so, so, so beautiful. He says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation that I find myself in. You know what contentment is? Contentment doesn't come when we have everything we want. Amen. Contentment comes when we want something and we are willing to wait on God for it. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Amen. Contentment does not come when we have everything that we want. Contentment comes when we have when we are in need of something and we are willing to wait on God for it. That's contentment. Contentment is not when you got everything and you say, oh, I got... Contentment is when you don't have it and you're waiting patiently on God to help you to get to that place or to get whatever it is that you want. That's contentment. If you can't be contented, you will have no joy. That is one of the most and the biggest joy stealer. You can't be contented with what you have. You can't be contented with where you are. You always have to have the latest. You always have to... That when, when you find yourself in that place, you have absolute, you are just de depleting your joy. The Banner Group did a study on why Christians lose their joy. And the group came up with a number of things. One of them is the lack of devotional life. You ain't got no devotional life, you ain't got no joy. Mm. Or you're very low in joy. If you have absolutely no uh, devotional life, that's one of the reasons why you're so miserable. That's what the banner group is saying. And if you have an unthankful spirit, these are joy stealers. An unthankful spirit, then, 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 if you have an unthankful spirit, you're just, just depleting your joy. How are you? You're not as happy. You, you're not experiencing that joy that is coming from within. When you're dreaming outside of the will of God, when your big dreams are outside of the will of God, then hey, <laughs> you're depleting your joy supply, boy. And this one is very when you're comparing yourself with others. Amen. When you constantly are comparing yourself with others, that's another way of stealing your joy. When you're constantly comparing yourself with others and, and competing and, and comparing and competing and, and, and that's just something that steals your joy. That just makes, that just, that just takes away something from you. And, and, and this one is, is, is so true. This one says, unresolved conflicts. They, they have this big and bold. This is actually number one. I kind of just was looking at some other ones, but this was actually number one, which is funny. That they say when you have unresolved uh, conflicts inside of you, you have some stuff going on, some issues that are unresolved, some conflicts that are unresolved, you cannot experience the joy of God. It, it kills the joy of God when you, when you have those issues that are unresolved, that you're carrying, especially issues that you're carrying for a very long time. There's some issues that you have that, that took place when you were a child 
and, and, and those things were never resolved when you were a child. You never got any counseling for them and you grew up with those things. Those things just became a part of your life. And the reason, the reason why you are the way you are is because sometimes there are some unresolved issues that you are dealing with, that you are carrying, that is burdening you down, that just makes you who you are unresolved. And you cannot experience, they kill the joy of God in your life. They kill this whole notion of joy in your life because your mind cannot be on God. Your mind is on those unresolved conflicts. They're powerful. They keep your minds away from God. And especially if it's an ongoing conflict that never, ever, 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 ever gets the chance to be in. And then you have some conflict that, that, they, they, that they change as they go along. You got some conflicts that they're not as constant as they just change. They take on a whole different shape, a whole different form. As you grow older, they just turn into a different animal. It's the same conflict, but it just keeps on changing itself. It's actually one of the worst things because every time you try to adjust and try to resolve, it just changes into something else. And you're trying to change and you're trying to, uh, 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 to adapt and it just changes into something else. And you cannot experience the joy of God. You're living your life as a Christian, but you're not happy at all. You have no joy inside of you. Because of unresolved conflicts. And if we don't learn to resolve some of those conflicts that are in our lives, we cannot experience the joy of having God be down inside of us. We have to. You can't just, you can't turn a blind eye. You can't sweep. There are some things that you can't sweep under the rug. You can't sweep it under the carpet. You can't turn a blind eye to it because you will not be the man or the woman that God intends for you to be. If you have an unresolved conflict, you have to stop and say, Lord, wait a minute. 